All right, and welcome to the Recovery Crew Podcast. I'm Dr. Bob Bear, and you're uh, you're here at uh, Deep Waters Recovery. And on the screen in front of me, I don't know if, if maybe you're not watching this on YouTube. Maybe you can only hear me, but in front of my screen is Camille Reed, uh, 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 the co-host here at uh, uh, the Recovery Crew, and also our programs manager doing a great job and our returning this is the return of robert park that's uh we should have some uh, like star wars music in the background when i say that uh robert was here uh last uh, last week or two weeks ago depending on how we publish this uh and told his story i'm still kind of moved from it uh juicy stuff but uh, uh welcome robert welcome uh camille Thanks, Bob. Thank you. And welcome, Bob. Hi, Bob. How are you? I'm, I'm all right. I'm talking to myself here today. All right. So uh, we're going to get started. We, we are talking about step six today, which is becoming ready to have our, uh, becoming entirely ready to have our uh, character defects removed from us. Oh, no. Don't take them yet. All right. So, uh, uh, so we're going to talk about that. Uh, and, it, you know, one of the things, this is a series that we're doing on uh the steps the 12 steps and uh yeah i like to remind myself and maybe anyone listening that the steps are pretty good uh pretty good design for living for anyone even if you didn't crash and burn like the three of us (laughs) you know it's a pretty good there's some pretty good stuff in there for for anybody so it's i I hope that uh, uh i hope that we can discuss it in that way and i hope that it's received that way today uh, but let's start out with uh, Camille. Why don't you let folks know what we're up to here at uh, at Deep Waters? Yes, here at Deep Waters Recovery, we are an advanced recovery and healing experience for men and women. Um, we've got the upcoming Deep Waters Intensive or DWI, which will be later this year. It's a three-day transformational trauma resolution experience that integrates psychodrama, bioenergetics, and rituals of empowerment. Um, and then we have the EFT or the Experiential Facilitators Training, which is an opportunity for anyone who works with others to do their own inner work and learn action tools that they can use in groups of their own. Um, you can also get certified to be an Experiential Facilitator um, and then come staff the Deep Waters in- Intensive eventually. Um, Deep Waters also has an outpatient program where you can work with Dr. Bear and his colleagues in groups, individuals, couples, and family sessions. Um, And then we've got these podcasts come out on Friday um, on our Facebook, Spotify, SoundCloud, YouTube, um, and then blogs come out on Monday. So you can like, share, subscribe, um, and then also follow Bob on TikTok as the Recovery and Trauma Guy. Yep. Yes. Uh, I think sometimes we call it the psychology shit show. Yes. I, I kind of like that. It's a little vulgar, but okay. Well, here we are. Um, and we have Robert Park with us again. He's the uh, executive director, owner, many, you can, uh, he, he is Lunar Recovery in Houston. It's the best treatment center <laughs> in Houston. Listen to, if you want to hear me uh, go on and on ad nauseum about that, listen to last week's podcast. Um but uh, it's a full, full range uh, continuum of care for folks uh, that really want the quality version of recovery and maybe not have to go back to treatment 84 times. Uh, so that's, uh, that's my short version of your bio, Robert. That's perfect. Uh, Happy to be here. Uh, and, there's, and there's much more uh, to, to his story, uh, but really grateful to have both of you on today. Uh, so we're going to have a, we're going to have a crisp and uh fun discussion about step six, which is um, uh, uh, we're entirely ready to have God remove all these defects of character, but I don't want to just splatter it in here uh, without at least giving a little context. So we, we, we're cruising through our life, right? Uh, uh, as conscious as we are. And then for many of us, something happens where we are uh, uh, awakened a bit, right? And we have to ask for some help. Maybe in the last podcast, uh, Robert, Uh, referred to that we do that at the Braveheart experience that I do for men at the uh, last uh, last resort treatment center uh, near Austin we have a whole thing about that and like practicing uttering these words 
I need help, right? <laughs> I don't know about women, Camille, but they don't come naturally to men. I'm <laughs> telling you, it didn't to me. In fact, I still have to squeeze it out of me. Oh, totally. Um, so when we get, you know, that first step is really about loosening up that ability to say, wait a minute, I, it's not just me. I need help. I've got to come out of my hole, right? And, 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 and also that first step is about looking at the damage that I've caused to myself in the world. And then maybe I'm open to some spiritual stuff. So meaning uh, seeing the world clearly and maybe the world, maybe seeing myself in it clearly and having some feelings again. And then the fourth and fifth step are about looking deeply at myself and the details of that and offloading some of the resentments because we, uh, uh, most of us are dragging around uh, a rock <laughs> uh, full of, uh, they did it to me, right? A bit, we, I have a big head full of, they did it to me. Um, and maybe they did, but what a painful thing to have to drag around. <laughs> um, so that's kind of the first five steps. I just, I think I just, uh, did a very poor description of the first five steps, but, uh, you know, and then we share all that with somebody in the fifth step, but the sixth step is, you know, a lot of the six and seven are, are the two steps that some people just sort of jump over. I think I have many times. It's just, oh, it's just a prayer, right? No. It's a, it's a whole section where there's actions involved and a certain, especially step six, uh, we're entirely ready to have God. And you, another way to think about it is we're entirely ready to have God uh, uh, change me and to actually do my life differently in a good way where, uh, and, and then, but there's a price in there. I can't act out in the way that I was. And mm -hmm. so even if I consciously want to become good or whatever, right? Uh, there are unconscious forces keep me from doing that. And there is work to be done in order to be ready to have these uh, behaviors removed. Um, so I don't know, there's a couple of quotes. We've all kind of cracked open the 12, what the, one of the pieces of literature is called the 12 and 12, 12 steps and 12 traditions. There's another book called drop the rock, which has a lot of, uh, stuff that shocks the shit out of me sometimes when I read it. <laughs> um, but we may make some quotes and, and bounce off of that. But why don't I uh, just open it up? Who would like to like say something about step six, about your experience with step six? Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I'll say that um, I, too, have, have kind of skipped over it a little bit. And uh, uh, in, in, in some regards, you know, you like I go to meetings, you don't hear a lot of meetings on step six because, you know, or anything like that. But yeah. Um, it is, it is, uh, important. And I thought a lot about it, uh, over the past week and, um, because of this podcast coming up, I'm like, Oh God, step six, how did I get that? You know? <laughs> <laughs> um, but you know, I think typically how I have explained it to sponsees is like, you know, as we're going after we do your fifth step, it's like, you know, it's really spinning an hour reviewing what you've done so far, you know, going back from before you did step one to step one to step two to three, four, five, and really kind of like making sure that you're still really ready to move on, you know, and um, we talk about that some in the third step. And in some aspects, I think step six is just like a reaffirmation of the third step um, yeah. and uh, in, in some regard. And and so it's a really important time of openness and reflection as you're going through the 12 steps, I think. And, um, and it really, I think, sets you up for step seven, which all the steps set you up for the next step, right? But I mean, it really sets you up in a beautiful way to have a intentional, deep, meaningful prayer um, that has a lot of energy and intention behind it, you know? So um, yeah, the prayer, yeah, it's, it's important. The prayer, the prayer stuff sort of tricks us out of our, intellectual stuck place right i mean yeah. it's a trick <laughs> I, I i don't know if you've experienced it that way but it's like why would prayer work you know what it's just a bunch of words but what it's doing is getting me off of my idea about the way to do life just for a minute yeah um yeah yeah for sure. all the spiritual stuff for me mindfulness even breath work it's like forcing me out of my small little box of figuring it out. And then the world opens up a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Yep. So yeah. Camille, Camille, what are your opening thoughts on steps? Well, 
I had the same thing. I was like, gosh, step six, like kind of thinking about it the last couple of days, like, well, what is my experience with that? And trying to, mm-hmm. you know, remember what it was like. And um, when I was in treatment, the first time I actually, you know, had done step six, everybody who was there, I remember asking them before I did step five, they were like, okay, you're going to go to your fifth step, like with this person. And then like, we're going to send you like, to your room so you can do step six and seven. And I remember asking somebody else that was there and I was like, what do I do? They were like, oh, you just like take a nap for like an hour. And I was like, sweet. (laughs) I was so excited. I was like, yeah. Yeah. Um, I love the 12 steps. This is so great. Yeah, Yeah. nap time is put in there with it. Like they're really thinking about us. But with a little little bit of reflection, which is- Yeah. 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 And so, you know- Step six, we're supposed to sort- it, it's action, but the action is to wait a minute, just be a little bit relax into this work. Yeah. What have I just done? And let the feelings come up is the way I would, I would talk, talk about part of it. Yeah. yeah I think you know. for me, once I, you know, was able to go back, like I did need that hour just to sit with my, myself and have like some really intentional reflection on everything I had just verbally said, all of the things that I had written, everything that, you know, because as you're saying your fifth step, you're kind of like feeling things come up, like it's a, you know, it's an experience in itself. So having that hour of reflection to be with myself, to go inside, um, to really be intentional about, okay, here are my character defects, which like I knew what they were, like, it wasn't like a shock to me. Like once I, you know, my, my sponsor gave me some character defects. I wasn't like, oh my gosh, really? I mean, it helped me look at it a little bit differently. Um, but just to sit with myself and yeah, have, have time with me and my higher power and say, all right, we're doing this. Like, yeah. here we are. You've made it another step and like really give yourself some grace like take that hour to really like soak everything in and be proud of yourself for making it that far and like connecting with your higher power and just, you know, being grateful. I think that's what a lot of it was. Like there was a lot of love that was surrounding me after that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there's a, you know, and and just for folks listening that maybe aren't as, you know, the the word character defect is a little off-putting for some folks. It's like, why are you calling yourself defective? Right. And it's mm-hmm. like, you know, sometimes that language isn't great, but you know, I, w- one thing I found out in the, in the, in the, the book, Alcoholics Anonymous, he, he, all he was doing is trying to find different words to say the same thing, character defects, shortcomings. We, there, it's like said in 10 different, if we could get by that and just realize that what we're talking about here is changing behaviors that have not worked for us, mm-hmm. changing behaviors that have kept us stuck in our lives changing behaviors that have hurt other people and push people away that we care about. And that's just another way to say, when we're saying character defects, that's what we're talking about. Step six is where we take a breath (laughs) and, and really deeply ask myself this question. Am I willing to let go of my resentment toward that, those people, that those institutions, am I or not? Maybe I'm not, maybe I need to rail against them for a while longer. (laughs) Uh, it's a, it's not a bad question uh, to ask. And, 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 am, and am I willing to like, just slow down just a little bit? And for many of us, there's four or five things that we know are creating shit in our lives. Am I really ready to have God remove these? Or do I still need to rail against people, run around like a chicken with my head cut off, uh, get on my phone off? I'm, I'm giving you a little insight into my current sixth step. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so it's uh, it's like the story, the Drop the Rock book, which I recommend for for anyone, uh, any twelve step recovery or not. The story essentially is, you know, there's a person swimming and they, they keep drown, almost drowning, and and they're yelling, "Hey, let go of the bag of rocks <laughs> that you're swimming with." Well, well, oh yeah, I can't. Well, so it's really a question: Do I still need that old stuff? Or can I let it go and yeah. trust possibly that there is a friendly universe here that uh, that will pull me up into the boat if I'll allow it? Yeah, I think that plays too much into like uh, you know identity. 
you know, it's like the, like my pain almost, you know, makes me who I am in some ways. So these things that have happened to me, like, you know, if I let go of those things, like who, who am I, you know? I mean, I think, you know, for me, like being so attached to the victim role of like, you know, just like, God, if I'm not a victim, then, you know, like what, yeah. what's going to happen? And, and while, yes, I, of course I want to be free. It's just like it, uh, I think there's like this deeper kind of connection to, you know, it's almost like death and rebirth in some ways, right? It's like, it, which is, I mean, hello, you know, talk about the 12 step process. Yeah, it's, uh, it's just like, it's like that, that, that dying of the, of the self that keeps us stuck and of those identities and beliefs and behaviors. And, you know, this is like, are you, are you, are you ready to continue to die a little bit more, <laughs> you know, in some ways? And, and uh, that's a big ask. Um, and it should be. And um, yeah, so I mean, like I think about steps four through nine, which in some ways I think is like, you know, step 10 kind of encapsulates four through nine, but, you know, it's, it's all about like freedom. And step six, what we're talking about is like, it's, God, I, I'm actually just now really kind of realizing maybe even for the first time how important it actually is. Mm -hmm. How free do you want to be kind of thing, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. Uh, one of the um, quotes that I pulled out that I think maybe is my favorite from the 12 and 12 after I read it this morning um, is... Okay, here it is. This does not mean that we all expect our character defects to be lifted out of us as the drive to drink was. A few of them may be, but with most of them, we shall have to be content with patient improvement. <laughs> the key words entirely ready underline the fact that we want to aim at the very best we know or we can learn. So the patient improvement part, um, I think, was... That's something that I had to think about a lot. I, I love how the 12 and 12 outlines it there. Um, it's like a, a great, you know, companion reading and just that's part of the intention. Like I'm setting my intention to continue to work towards this, you know, progress, not perfection, like little bits of improvement here and there. And always like remember like that six step experience that you have and move towards something like the perfection side, yeah. I guess. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and I think it's like, gosh, if we didn't, if they were just all removed, I mean, think about all the lessons, I could think about all the lessons that I wouldn't learn, you know, I mean, because it's yeah. like, you know, through consciously trying to be a more um, authentic self, uh, you know, to try to truly fully embody like what I, what I see as my, my true self or whatever you want to call it. It's, uh, man, it's, it, God, it's edgy kind of, you know, traipsing through there sometimes yeah. and, you know, make mistakes and, and man, all the lessons I've learned just like, you know, really, you know, working through some of these shortcomings slash defects slash whatever else you want to call it, protect, you know, protectors that were put in place, you know, whatever they are, um, uh, it's, it's a pretty cool journey. Yeah, we, uh you just spoke to it a little, you spoke to it last week too. Uh, step six is a little bit of shadow work. I mean, what I mean by that is in Carl Jung's psychology, he, uh, he defines the shadow as par parts of us that uh, we don't have, we don't know we have, or we don't think that we have. That's not part of us. In 12-step recovery, it's the spot that you got it. If, if I really want to choke that guy, he's probably acting like me or in some way, in a way that I don't let myself act because I wouldn't want anybody to see it. Um, you know, we have a lot of shadows. There's parts of us that are in the dark. <laughs> and, and Jung points at those as not necessarily bad. We're not bad, uh, although many of us acted bad. But and we don't mean the parts of us that are, are like bad as much as they're just in the dark. <laughs> yeah. You know, in order, if we want to grow, we've got to put a flashlight on those darker places. And one of the things you just spoke to was we've got to realize that those things got us here. You know, I mean, we got to make a little bit of a friend or it's not going to come out of the dark for us. Totally. It's like, it's like yeah. I love, I love the way you talk about that. You know, I needed my anger just to survive. I needed my selfishness just to, just to hold myself together. You know what I mean? 
I don't yeah. think I need it quite so much anymore. And it's a process. I'm not going to offload it all today. But I like the uh, little story in the Drop the Rock. It has like these little little scenarios. It's like this guy is uh, he's down uh, he's down on the concrete looking around, and this cop walks by and says, uh, "What are you doing?" He said, "I'm looking for my keys. I'm looking for my keys." And the cop gets down there working hard, looking for his keys, and he said, "Well, I'm not seeing them here." He said, "Where'd you drop them? Are you sure you dropped them here?" No. He said, "No, I dropped them over there in the dark uh, uh, by that other pole." He said, well, why aren't we looking over there? Well, well I'm afraid of the dark. <laughs> this is like, yeah, we've got it. And here's the deal. Here is the big deal. I'm afraid of the dark. I'm afraid of my darkness. I only get permission to do it when I, I'm hanging out with a, a guy like Robert or a person like Camille that's so authentic. Oh, maybe I could be authentic and own my shit too. Yeah. And maybe, so and maybe I have the same experience. Yeah. 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 It's, uh, you know, that's we heal in community and, uh, um, uh, you know, thank God it's kind of the way this thing's worked for me is that I've seen, I've seen people get vulnerable and, and, and be honest in ways that I'm like, what the, wow, like, that is like, you know, and I'm just like, that's possible. Like, I didn't even know that was possible. Yeah. And one of the things, Camille, you, that you said was like, oh, yeah, I mean, I knew what my defects were. Well, just to like clue you in how much in the dark I was, I was like, what do you mean I'm selfish? I'm not selfish. <laughs> you know, like that's that's literally where I was in the beginning, you know, and just like it was some of the stuff was like, you know, mind blowing to me and and and, and offensive a little bit, too. <laughs> yeah. I, well, I thought I was being pretty sly with all of my dishonesty. I thought, you know, and then uh, that was the one where I was like, they do know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they must know something. And it's like, uh -huh. yeah, we all know. Like, you, you think that you're, you know, so sly, but we all know. <laughs> so I think this, I think this step is important, uh, way more important than I ever, and I've been doing this a long time and I've only recently, I, you know, I teach, you teach what you need to learn, right, Robert? Um, that's right. And that's why we're doing this thing right here. You and I are both having little awakenings at, uh, around how we've given short shrift to this step. It's for sure. It is the place where I should really be able to just take some time. Do am I willing? And this is really relevant for me. Am I really willing to let go of the victim? I think that's the main thing. <laughs> that step six and seven is all right. Am I really ready to transcend this idea that they're after me or they're getting, they're doing it to me? I mean, it's a great question. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's, and, and just, you know, one more thing, probably before we start, I want to throw this out here. These, these two steps are the two steps that if you had to vote, which one is the least action involved? What do you do? There's not much to do there. Right. I mean, we'd all kind yeah. of vote. And, and actually that's kind of, that's kind of bullshit because what it is, what we're encouraged to do is start acting as if we don't have these character defects. <laughs> like, yeah. all right, I'm resentful. You did it to me again, Robert. But instead I'm going to just try saying, ah, all right, yeah. Mark, thanks for sharing. <laughs> <laughs> it's a thanks program. For your, of thanks for your feedback. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, but that's just what's so great about all these steps. It's like, they just like take on so much more meaning the more you, look at them and talk about them and live them. And, and, you know, it's like, Oh, there's like a whole other layer here that I like, you know, it's, uh, and I, from what I hear from people that have been doing this longer than I have, that continues to happen. Yeah. So it's happening right now. Yeah. I think I'm cured. I think, <laughs> I think this podcast has cured me. Let's talk to your recovery community about oh. that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh -oh. We're good. <laughs> uh oh, it just got real. Hey, Great uh, little conversation. Why don't we, uh, let's have a little fun question to sort of close with. How about this? Uh, uh, let's just throw out that, what are you most grateful for? And I'm, I'll start, uh, it just occurred to me, my daughter, my 19 year old daughter, uh, every step along the way I've been, oh man, I don't want her to grow up. I like her just the way she, and now I, I could cry about it. Uh, how beautiful this 19 year old superstar woman uh, is the conversation I had with her yesterday. It's a whole nother person. 
it's like, I'm going to ask for some advice from her the next time uh, around some relationship stuff. <laughs> it's come to this. So um, I'm so grateful for my relationship with my daughter. Next. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Man, I, I'm grateful that it's hard to pick one um, because there's so many of them that, um, I, you know, I, I would have to say it's, man, it's my wife. You know, I am really, really grateful for my wife. And uh, man, she's just like the perfect fit for me to like just, man, she rubs me like, and I don't, I don't mean this sexually, but I mean, she, she rubs me in all the ways that like, just like, you know, it's exactly what I need to either work on or look at. Mm. And we're able to hold space for each other. We're able to communicate and we're able to, always work through things without throwing something or yelling or, you know, leaving the house or anything. We both just stay. And uh, it's a beautiful partnership. Great. Oh, I love that. Mm -hmm. um, I think, yeah, I had, I'm grateful that I have a lot of things to be grateful for as well. But I think probably for me right now in this moment is I'm grateful for like the awareness and intuition that I've gained through being in recovery mm, yeah. just the mindset and the shift that has happened like I'm so grateful that I'm in that now and not what I was in before wow yeah what a, what a great what a great closing line there yeah. <laughs> for all of this work it's like yeah I am so grateful all that shit I don't want I don't want all the shit that happened to get me here <laughs> I don't want it to happen again I'm not that grateful uh but I am grateful for it and for the, and for, uh, uh, the, the, the gifts of today. Yeah. We could all, Indeed. we could all list them. Yeah. Um, but, uh, one thing I'm grateful for is friends like you. I got people like you in my life. Wow. How did I, how did I pull that off? Uh, that's a God thing, but I think it's time to close here, folks. Uh, it's hard to let go. I'm not, it's one of my character defects. I can't feel my, cold dead fingers off of anything all right so uh so what what a great conversation all right so how do we close here i think camille maybe one more short little thing about what's happening at deep well how about robert why don't you tell us about luna and how to get a hold of you and then okay great yeah um luna recovery outpatient treatment uh with a clinical focus in Houston. And then we also have a nine bed residential treatment center. It is um, very small, multiple individual, like a lot of clinical attention. So multiple individual sessions a week. It almost, it's interesting because my first love was uh, like kind of hotels and restaurants and this center, it almost operates like a bed and breakfast. There's just really sophisticated treatment going on while there. And uh, we're really, really excited about it. It's our newest program. So um, I'm jazzed about all of it, but that in particular, that program, it's, it's, it's really incredible. So thank you. Uh, Robert at LunarRecovery.com. Phone number is 832-850-2980. Website's LunarRecovery.com. Yeah. Thank you. Saving lives in Houston, Texas. Oh, yeah, baby. <laughs> yeah. That's and awesome. uh, yeah, short deep waters version. Um, so deep waters recovery here in Austin, Texas. Um, we have the deep waters intensive coming up later this year, three day transformational um, intensive. And then we also have the experiential facilitators training that will be before that. Um, if you want any more information, on those two events, you can go to deepwatersrecovery.com or shoot me an email at admin, A-D-M-I-N, at deepwatersrecovery.com. And yeah, keep up with the podcasts, like, follow, share, subscribe. Got some fun people coming up to join yeah. us on here. Reach out to us and uh, give us some suggestions for guests on here, if you like. Yeah. Maybe you want to be a, uh, a guest, just email us. And uh, anyway, this was a blast today with you yeah, guys. Um, uh, let's uh, let's close this thing. Thanks, Camille. Thanks, Robert. Thanks for everybody listening. This is the uh, this is the uh, the recovery crew here at Deep Waters. You're in the deep waters now.